Hello everyone, a warm welcome in continuation to the summary analysis of Unit 8, that is of Paper 1, Fundamentals of Sociology. Today's lesson, I'm going to explain to you all monism that comes under the types of religious practices. So we have monism, pluralism, sects and cult that comes under the types of monism, which I'll be going on explaining to you step by step. So the next slide tells about the syllabus as prescribed by the UPSC for the unit 8, that is religion and society. Today's lesson, like how I said, I mean, going in for a recap, my previous lesson was about the types of religious practices where I explained to you all about animism. Today, about monism. This is the symbol of metaphysics, what we say. Metaphysics. Now, what do you understand by metaphysics? I'll explain to you all now. Now, the, when we use the word metaphysics, it is a branch of philosophy that deals with abstract concepts such as being, identity, time, and space. Monism. When we talk about monism, monism is a meta. It is metaphysical and theological view that all is one. When I say one, the number one, there is no fundamental division when it comes up to, like, you know, the psychic or you can say even the physical, that is the metaphysical, supernatural thing. There is just no division. They all say there's just one. Like, it takes from, it can, like, how it reduced to one thing or a one substance. Now, this monism is a belief of a single attribute or you can say a characteristic or a single god or a one single religious idea. It is derived from the Greek monos means single and like you know and without division, without any division. Now this is the monism is the opposite to pluralism, where you have different kind of sects like you know, uh, good and evil, light and darkness. Like you know, so the way you look, however the ideology it's different. Like and even of course pluralism is like you know, uh, uh, like you know, it is opposed to solid to dualism. That is two time uh, two types of substances or two types of ideas you can say good and evil light and darkness and even pluralism of course is a different type of stuff which i'm going to explain to you all in my next lesson now the word monism and metaphysics was first used by christian love's logic in 1728 it was used to denote like you know it was and it was this term in fact was very very popular actually if you see now this is monism is something that is not a phenomenon of the modern society this is of the older uh, many many years ago where this, this was very popular it was popular in all cultures even in hinduism it was also popular now this monism is used to denote Note the philosophical theories, which was one which recognized as only single kind of reality. They gave importance to mono, one idea, one power, and it could be in any form. It could be in the form of physical or it could be in the form of psychical. When I say psychical, what do I mean? Like, you know, the supernatural, the metaphysical aspect. Now, broadly speaking, when we talk about, uh, like, you know, monism, it is a doctrine, you can say, or you can say it is a doctrine or which follows one principle, one God, one body of ritual, or one set of ideology and moral doctrines. Now, during the medieval times, was, you know, now, like, you know, this, like how I said, this was very, very popular, where it is, they try to, like, you know, ex explain where all reality has to be explained in only one term. During the medieval period, this religion, like in fact, offered, they laid emphasis on this monism. I'll explain for this. We will have to go back to history. Like, you know, monism is found in philosophical, religious and like you can say, cosmological doctrines. Now, the concept is something that is very, very ancient. Like how? Now, in the medieval period, like, you know, uh, in the medieval period, what happened? Religion was was the foundation, you can say. Religion was a main foundation to the formation of a political state or the people who are ruling the country. So it is believed that, like, you know, different religions... I mean, have different political identities of the state. So you have, like, you know, uh, and different, uh, like, different religious uh, religions, different. Uh 
each religion has its own differences though the main concept may be the same but it has different variations in the political identity now for example like you know and different religions glorify the different politi political identity of the state now example in the roman empire this is a roman empire you had the emergence of the christian state and in the middle east it gave rise to islamic state which was also known as the post egyptian civilization it is only during the 18th century where the society is evolving like you know it is going towards like you know it is uh, progressing you had like you know the the society witnessed like you know slave trade you had coming of like an you know, expansion of trade routes you had and even it was all about territorial boundaries people annexing one kingdom to another annexation so this also led to warfare expand boundaries and you know annex of war now this also gave rise to a emergence of a culturally pluralistic society now take the example of india itself now we are a country who always been annexed by other cultures so that is the reason you see ours is a very very diverse culture culture you have so many religions this is what happened also in europe so the major concern like you know so this because you had many those days it was you had no democracy as such so it was all about waging wars annexing each annexation of one country and another so each one from a religious background occupied another play, another country so his religion was was used as a dictatorship to like you no know, force people to follow his religion as such so this was the this was the scenario in the 18th century so this gave rise to a culturally emergence of a culturally pluralistic societies now however the the major concern was the major concern was how do we now, now the major concern of the state in uh, in the europe and in places in europe is how to transform these multicultural to a cultural uniformity see whenever you have like you know a multicultural society it always leads to problems because culture is something that is very sensitive a small issue becomes a big issue we know this even happening in our country so the main issue of the state was how do we convert these multicultural like in society into a cultural uniformity where you would have just one religion or a one ideology or something like that so in the 18th century so what happened is in europe like you know 18th century europe they you know what they these states or the governments they you know they gave permissions to missionaries so to convert these minorities these cultural these minority communities to these religious like you know who are the majority or who belong to the majority religion and this what happened and it is or studies have also shown that how 18th century in europe how these cultural minorities were pushed into ghettos ghettos are like you know like a very where you have all the poor people staying a one community staying and not only that one you have and the people were pushed into slave trade they were forced to join warfare they were like you know imposed heavy fines on them say because if they did not listen to the commander or the like how i said the dominant religion guy if i mean if they did not listen to the refusal to listen to the commander uh, like you know his views or something this is what ha happened like you know as the society went on like you know okay i mean i still have to explain over this one now as the society went on like this is how it happened now these monastic societies like you know like you know once they were able to convert everybody they started glorifying like you know one ruler one ideology the culture development the cultural in and there was cultural intolerance to like you know uh, the minority communities so they glorified the the monastic like you know one our religion one ruler one ideology like that but as time passed away like you know as time passed then you had like you know with the advent of free trade and all these things like you know the culture of democracy in the 19th century it was like you know it was a different relationship different ideologies and regime there was harmony there was relationship there was you know you can say diversity there was there was secular feeling about all these things Now, when we talk about the religious monism, it has two forms: atheism, of course, it believes that there's no, they don't believe in God. Pantheism. Now, pantheism is a belief that God and the universe are one and the same. It is a type of religious belief rather than a special, like you know, you can say a specific, like you know, uh, it. They believe in this, like you know, one common, one major characteristics where they say is like you know. 
one everything god and the universe is one and the, the date is very essential to the world on which the because the whole universe depend on it pantheism is a view that the world is either identical to god or an ex- expression of god's nature now uh, this uh, pantheists the people who so like you know who profess this uh, pantheism are generally you can say very strong supporters of scientific inquiry you can say people with modern thinking as well as uh, like you know uh, as well as uh, religious intolerance they don't believe in this religious intolerance because it's all about rationality they were talk and they believe that god is present in everywhere that is why pan means all theism means believe. so they feel that god is present everywhere in every form in nature so god is everything and everything is god now when we baruch spinoza the 17th century philosopher was the man who introduced this pantheistic beliefs many religious and like you know religious and like philosopher or philosophical they like you no know, liked his like you no know, uh, beliefs or whatever he said and if you see pantheism is something that you can even see like you know in religions even in hinduism buddhism etc and he brought about his idea in his book through his book in ethics that was published in 1677 but the church did not think very high of his ideas of pantheism his ideology gained moment in the 19th century where you had people like you know thinkers like how i said um, uh, scientific thinkers people who were known for their knowledge like william words for the ralph waldo emerson henry david and of course you had albert einstein who believed a lot in pantheism now when we talk about monism you can find the ancient form of pantheism in brahmanism also because its main tenets like you know were expressed in the upanishads and systematized by the vedanta sutras the advaita vedanta the absolute mon- like you know they said that adi shankara was the best representative so you had gaudapada also the hindu philosopher of the vedanta school who denied any individualism and pluralism he said appearances and individual minds are only temporary it is just a man the most important is the soul at the same time you had advaita who also said there's no distinction between disciple and god everything for them was all as brahman yogacharya or the vigyananda school that is the this uh, this this is the vigyananda school is it's a philosophy it's a school you can say or a branch philosophy of the mahayana buddhism where the central doctrine was also that they said that consciousness is real that thought and mind is the ultimate reality they said the external things do not exist nothing exists out there gave lot of importance to the inner consciousness sufi saints also the sufi philosopher ibn arabic he developed the concept of unity of being a monistic philosophy like you know where everything was given importance to the almighty or the god so you can see traces of monism and pantheism even in old religions like hinduism and buddhism and like and this is something like you know you, you not only see this traits of monism and uh, pantheism and pantheism to you can see the traces in buddhism confucianism darwinism taoism and you can even in the new age movements also you can see there presence so this is the end of my lesson the next lesson i'm going to focus on the types of religious practices that is pluralism a great pleasure teaching you guys i'll see you in my next lesson request you all to just do a short review like my course and share it with your friends i think it's going to help follow